Recently, our friend Jerry Dyer of Big Jet TV captured a rather sporty landing of a Boeing 777-300ER at London's Heathrow Airport. It's generated a lot of interest and comments, and today we're going to get into this with a frame-by-frame -frame analysis, learn a little bit about dynamic stability of aircraft, and clear up some misconceptions about this landing. It's Friday, the 29th of December. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. I'm a current rated 777 first officer, and bad landings happen to nearly all of us at some point in our career. Ask me how I know. However, there are some things to keep in mind to prevent a bad landing from becoming a much worse situation. Let's get into it. A bad landing, if improperly handled, can produce a pilot-induced oscillation which can bang the nose gear down on the runway so hard that it can crease the fuselage or damage the fuselage right up here as we've seen in the recent United 767 hard landing. That was not the case in this landing. This PIO was stopped before the aircraft was damaged. A pilot-induced oscillation of the longitudinal axis can look something like this from this old NASA video of the F-8 while they were developing the fly-by-wire flight systems. The Boeing 777 has a conventional fly-by-wire flight control system using a conventional yoke with conventional aircraft feel and feedback to it, a yoke that's connected between the two pilots. The, these Control inputs go to the actuator control electronics and then up to the flight control computers and then back to the actuator control electronics, which turns the signal from analog to digital and back to analog and then out to the hydraulic power control units, which actually physically move the control surface. It's a very realistic and excellent flight control system by Boeing to give you a natural large aircraft feel to the flight controls. Every transport category aircraft and most general aviation aircraft are required by FARs to exhibit positive dynamic stability about all three axes of the aircraft, which means that here on the longitudinal axis, if you have a gust of wind that pitches the aircraft up, the aircraft will naturally dampen the response and return to equilibrium. Same thing with the roll mode. If you hit a gust, the natural tendency of the aircraft is to return to equilibrium. Same thing with the rudder and the yaw. This positive dynamic stability is designed into the aircraft using the center of gravity, the center of pressure, the angle of attack of the wings, the shape of the wings, the sweep of the wings, the angle of incidence of the wings, the angle of incidence of the tail. All of this helps to produce positive dynamic stability. The physics and the math to create this dynamic stability is derived from a simple mass spring dampened system as illustrated here. Positive dynamic stability or a under dampened mass spring system. That's right. The system that's in the forks, the front forks of your motorcycle is the same physics that scientists use to create positive dynamic stability in aircraft. And there's some excellent lectures here online that show you this derivation. Just fascinating. So as long as the accelerating force or driving force is less than the restoring force, the aircraft will exhibit positive dynamic stability or the mass spring system will exhibit under damping characteristics. And both systems will return to equilibrium. However, as pilots, we can mess up this natural dynamic stability by putting in large control inputs at about the same frequency as the oscillation and just about 90 degrees out of phase. When we get into one of these situations, we tend to naturally react as humans and that reaction is just delayed enough to make the whole situation worse and create what's called a fugoid or fleeing oscillation where the oscillations no longer get smaller and smaller. They instead get bigger and bigger until at which point you end up whacking the nose gear on the runway 
and buckling the fuselage up here, potentially, if you do not stop this PIO or pilot-induced oscillation. So instead of trying to continue to move the control surfaces to get them back into a phase opposite of that of the oscillation to stop the oscillation, it's much easier for pilots to simply stop moving the controls and instead hold a, in the case of a pitch, pitch oscillation, hold a set amount of elevator that replicates a normal landing attitude and allow the natural dynamic stability of the aircraft to dump, dampen out the oscillations. So let's break this down frame by frame. Big shout out to uh, Jerry Dyer, the proprietor of Big Jet TV. Subscribe to his channel and look to the link below to watch the whole clip unedited from Jerry Dyer, Big Jet TV. Come over here for the Big Jets and stay for his hilarious narratives. Here comes the Boeing 777-300ER in from Los Angeles to landing at London Heathrow Airport on a gusty, windy day. The flaps are down and note the leading edge slats are down as well. So as the jet flies past us, we'll be looking at the back side of these leading edge slats. All the way down to this point, the approach looks good. There's a little bit of um, turbulence there on the wings. You can see the wings bending a little bit. And now you can see the wingtip vortices coming off of the flaps, right off the end of the flaps here. Of course, there's also two giant wingtip vortices coming off of the wingtips as well. And I believe this is a left crosswind situation, so the pilot is doing well to keep the left wing down into the wind. But then right about in here, there is either a gust of wind, a wind shear, or possibly wake turbulence from the aircraft ahead of them. Remember at London's Heathrow Airport, they're landing the aircraft just as soon as one aircraft clears off of the runway the next aircraft is touching down so just minimum wake turbulence separation if, and if the winds are just right that wake turbulence can definitely impact you even a big heavy boeing 777 so not sure what the accelerating force is here but it looks like it starts with a bat to the left wing down now again we're looking below here at the backside of the leading edge slats so right here we see a little bit of left aileron input remember as you apply left aileron you also get the wing spoilers on that side to lower the left wing the wing continues to drop the pilot puts in right aileron control input now the left aileron is down the right aileron is up and the flying spoilers are up on the right wing the aircraft is not quite yet touched down. So right here with the right aileron input, we see a rather large up elevator input as well, which is going to induce a pitch up. Just as soon as the pitch up of the nose begins, we see a large elevator down input. Again, just prior to touchdown. As the nose starts to come down, another, a second large up elevator input is applied followed by a down elevator input as the aircraft touches down. So here we again, we have that second up elevator input, down elevator, which really gets that nose swinging down towards the ground. Let's see if we can slow that down. Here it is slowed down. There's the down elevator input bounce, and that really gets the nose heading down. Up elevator input, down elevator input, just 90 degrees out of phase. But right in here, he does the right thing. He just stops moving the elevator and just sets it at that desired approach attitude setting and let the thing stabilize on its own using its own natural dynamic stability. Hold that elevator, just hold it right there. Little bit of up, up up and bring it down good now once the nose wheel is on the ground everything's it's all the all the drama is over in less than nine seconds now you just ease the nose the elevator down once the nose is on the ground to just keep the nose wheel on the ground so you can enable your nose wheel steering to be more effective especially in uh, wet slippery windy gusty conditions
By the way, here you can see all the ground spoilers deployed, automatic ground spoilers. All the spoilers pop up once the weight on the wheels is sensed. And that gets rid of all that extra lift and helps you with effective wheel braking of the aircraft, getting it stopped. So again, in real time, courtesy of Jerry of Big Jet TV, this can happen to any of us. And at some point in your career, you will have a hard landing. Everything looks normal. A little bat to the left, right, and then we start the PIO. Bam! Get the nose gear, and now hold it. Hold that elevator. Hold it. Just stop it and bring her down. Fortunately, apparently no damage was done to this aircraft. It was inspected for a hard landing. So why didn't the pilot go around? Well, it was a stabilized approach. All of this was over in a matter of nine seconds. Yes, you can go around after you touch down. Even after the ground spoilers have come up, you can continue the option to go around all the way until that point which you begin to actuate the thrust reversers. Once the thrust reversers are out, the go around option is no longer available to you. But in this case, the bounce wasn't so high up into the air that the consequences of coming back down would have outweighed the possibility of going around. So the crew elected not to take this one around and it was over in a matter of seconds. As a crew member, if you think you've had a hard landing, the best thing to do is to write it up in the logbook as a possible hard landing and that will alert maintenance to go ahead and look at the data on board the aircraft to see if any exceedances were exceeded for example, the G limit for landing, and then they can determine the correct series of inspections that they need to make on the aircraft before the aircraft moves on to its next destination. In this particular case, apparently there were no exceedances. However, a hard landing maintenance inspection was performed on the aircraft. So hard landings are a fact of life in a pilot's career. A hard landing that results in damage to the aircraft is still extremely rare. On my uh, 777 hard landing experience, that happened uh, in my first 100 hours of flying the airplane. You know, that first 100 hours where you are where you don't know what you don't know, or maybe you think you know it all. Uh, in my case, <laughs> I was uh, trying to minimize the amount of, of uh, flare down the runway, minimize the amount of distance I used for the flare in the uh, runway, and it resulted in a late flare of the 777 coming into Miami and and uh, <laughs> Captain Dave over there in the right in the left seat. You know, it's time to flare when the captain when his eyes get real big and his head comes back like this. And he just began to say something like flare when I just drove it right onto the runway with a minimum flare. Just bam -o, kablammo. Um, and, but there was no bounce. Uh, the <laughs> excellent suspension of the Boeing 777 absorbed the abuse and we just stayed on the runway and rolled out. I went, uh, on the, um, well, <laughs> I, I asked the uh, flight attendants in the back there, did I drop any masks? Did I drop the rubber jungle? That's one of the first sure signs of a hard landing is if the masks fall out of the ceiling and <laughs> they reported back that, no, you didn't drop the rubber masks. And please, passengers, don't forget to wear your seatbelts. It's required on takeoff and landing that you have your seatbelts on, just like us in the front. If you think it's a wild ride in the front of the aircraft, you folks sitting in the back of the aircraft with that moment of inertia and that long moment of arm on an aircraft like a 777, the folks in back are really going to get jostled during one of these hard landing events. Keep your seatbelts fastened. Now, is there any re repercussions for the pilots? No, you get your paperwork filled out in a timely fashion and you explain to them what happened and there's normally no repercussions as long as this is not a recurring theme. <laughs> it just simply happens throughout a pilot's career. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. Yeah, there was the time in the uh, 727 at Washington, D.C. That time I did drop the masks. So that's two hard landing kablamos for Brownie. See you here. Uh -huh.